Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome. I'm glad y'all could join us today. We've got some folks that are still coming in and connecting to audio, so we are going to give them a second. All right. Awesome. Well, thank you all so much for joining us today. If you haven't been here before, uh, my name is Sarah Lorenzen, and I am an outreach specialist and a certified financial education instructor with the Oklahoma State Regents for Higher Education and our initiative, Oklahoma Money Matters. Uh, I also help with our initiative, Ready, Set, Repay, which is all about student loans. So um, that's a whole lot of words to say that I spend 40 hours a week talking to students about their money, uh, student loan borrowing and budgeting. And uh, this Make It Count webinar is an event that we do every uh, month on the third Tuesday of every month on a different financial topic. And since everybody is going back to school this month, we thought it would be a really great idea to talk about budgeting while you're in college. This is definitely something I wish that I would have had when I was in school. Um, so I'm definitely excited to talk to y'all about it today. So let's go ahead and get started. If you've never attended one of these webinars before, I have some norms that we like to, uh, kind of keep up just to make this a little bit better for all of us involved. Um, if you're comfortable, I'd love for you to keep your camera on. We are in the classroom a lot, and so I love being able to see people's faces. I understand that that is not always possible depending on where you are or, or what, so if you can't do that, that's okay too. If you just don't feel comfortable being on camera, that is a-okay. Okay. Um, but I am going to ask that you stay muted, not because I don't want you to talk to me. I definitely want you to use that chat feature, but uh, because this is being recorded for folks to look at later, we want to make sure that you stay on mute just so we can make sure that everyone can hear. And I will apologize in advance. I have a dog here at my house and he is quite grunchy, uh, uh, excuse me, grouchy today. Um, we just moved and he's still kind of getting used to everything. And so he's been growling at all sorts of stuff. So I'm hoping that my headset will keep you from hearing him being loud, but I can't promise anything. So I'm going to apologize in advance for that. Um, but if you have any questions or comments throughout this, please put that in the chat. I want you to talk to me, um, ask questions. If you uh, have good advice for any students we may have on the call, because I know I have a few of our professional uh, friends on the call, uh, please make sure to share that. But I am going to ask that we are respectful of everybody else's opinions and thoughts, because when it comes to money, we were all raised differently. And it can be kind of a hot button topic. We all have opinions because we were all raised differently and our approaches to money may be different and that is a-okay, but we wanna make sure that we're being respectful of other people's experiences. So that being said, what are we gonna talk about today? Well, we're gonna talk about building a spending plan. If you've never done one of those before, the beginning of the semester is a good time to start. So uh, we're gonna talk about what a spending plan is and how you put one of those together. We're also gonna talk about why it's important to have one. Um, I'm also gonna talk about what are some budget busters, some things that you need to know um, to make sure you're being successful. And then we're also gonna talk about making your dollar stretch. When you're in college, it is more vital to be smart with your money than almost any other time. You know, It's always good to be smart with your money, but when you are in college and you are on a really tight budget because you're trying to pay for school, it is important to make sure every dollar is working for you. So we're gonna talk about some ways that you can cut costs to make things cheaper, not only just costs for college, but also how we can help with some other um, things. So let's go ahead and get started. First things first, um, if you've been on one of these before, you know that I always launch a poll. And the reason I am doing that is because we have a lot of different people that come on these calls. We have students, we have staff, uh, we have professionals from, uh, you know, different realms, and I want to know who you are so I know who I'm talking to on the call today. So if you would just take a second just to fill this out, and if you hit that other category, you are not 
uh, one of our college educators, college staff, go ahead and jump in that chat real quick and let people know where you're coming from. Uh, we always enjoy having folks with uh, different experience and backgrounds. So please feel free to jump in and let us know who you are. I'll give y'all another second to do that. All right, looks like we have almost everybody. All right. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and share that results. We have a huge group of all kinds of folks with us today from kind of all different areas and all different spaces in life, some folks working in high school, some folks working in college, some students. So we are super excited to have you guys here today, and I hope that all of you will have uh, something that you come out of here with. So that being said, let's go ahead and jump in and get started because I want to be respectful of your lunch hour time. So where do you start? If you've never built a budget before, the very first thing you need to know is how much money you have coming in, right? You can't give that money jobs. You can't figure out what you can pay or what you can't pay if you don't know what money you have available to you. So that is the first step. We're going to go and we're going to write down any money that you have in. Now, if you are a student, this may be what financial aid you have available to you. This may be what money you have coming in from a part-time job or work-study job. If you are a staff member and an adult doing this for the first time, that may be what your salary is every month or every two weeks that you get. Um, if you have any side hustles, you know, you do Uber or DoorDash or any of those things, you want to make sure that you're factoring all that in so you know. And make sure you keep track of it, especially if you have a varying income for 30 to 90 days. Why? Because sometimes, especially when you're working an hourly job, that income can fluctuate. And you want to make sure that you're using an average so you know what money you have available to you. Because there are sometimes that income might be very, very high, and sometimes it might not be as high. And so we want to make sure that we're getting kind of an average that we can work with here. Okay, our next step is we need to figure out what all of our financial responsibilities are. So that being said, what things do you have to pay for, right? Are you responsible for rent? Are you uh, paying your utilities? Do you have a car payment, insurance? Oh, how much are you having to pay for groceries or gas? Now, those are variable expenses, so those might change, but make sure that you're writing them down so you know that that's something you need to take into account. Also, make sure you're taking into account things that might come up annually, like registering your car or maybe paying your insurance every six months if you aren't paying it monthly to your insurance company. Write all of that stuff down, and that's going to help us see what money you have to pay so we can be responsible uh, for making sure that we're planning ahead. And the next step is we're going to track our expenses. So we want to go back and we want to look at your expenses for the last 30 to 90 days when we are setting this up for the first time. Why? Just like with our income, sometimes your expenses can change, especially with those variable expenses, those things that change depending on, uh, you know, what's going on. I travel a lot for work and I always get reimbursed by my job for my travel at the end of the month, but I have to make sure that I have in my budget enough money to put gas in my car, make sure that I have my oil changed and all of those things before I travel and before they reimburse me. So I have to go in and make sure that I have an average money that I'm going to spend because one month I may be at home or only at the office every single day. You know, this next couple of months with the fall semester starting, I'm going to be all over the state of Oklahoma. You know, I, I already for the month of September, I'm going to hit all four quarters of the state at at least one point. So that being said, we want to make sure that you are tracking that spending so you can get a good average of what you're looking at as far as how much money you're going to need in certain categories like gas and food. Now that we've done this, 
with what honestly is probably the hardest part because you have to keep doing this. You can't just do it once and then call it good. You have to make sure that you are tracking your spending every single month as this goes forward because we're going to teach you how to set up a budget. But if you don't track your spending, you could have the most perfect budget and it will be completely worthless if you're not keeping track of the spending and that your money is actually going where you're intending it to go. Okay, so the next step is we're going to categorize our spending, right? So we're going to find some ways to actually look at what we've spent our money on. Okay, so you're going to take that list that you wrote down all of your expenses on, and we're going to put them in categories. You're going to add up. How much money did you spend in gas last month? How much money did you spend in food? How much was your utility bill? How much is your car payment? And you're going to list all of those things out and you're going to total them up and you're going to put them in categories. And we do this for a couple of reasons. One, because it's easy to see what you're spending in a particular category. And two, because if we have to shift our spending, it's a lot easier to look at it this way so we can see, oh, well, I'm spending a lot of money going out to eat. Maybe I can go out to eat a little bit less and I can shift that money into savings for an emergency fund, or I can take that money and I can put it towards paying off debt. Or in the case of students, maybe I can take this money that I'm spending and I can shift it into helping to pay for my books next semester. So maybe I don't have to take out a student loan in order to pay for them. So on the screen, you'll see a few options. And I always put a few options up here because the thing is, just like none of our experiences are the same, the way we think is not the same. You know, my mom, when it came to her budget, she was an administrative assistant. She could use Excel like no one I've ever met in my life. And she had a budget that was like four or five pages long and everything auto-calculated itself. And it was, honestly, it was beautiful. As a financial educator, like I'm a little envious because Honestly, that's not how my brain works. So at one point she got sick and I had to help her take over her finances. And I was looking at that spreadsheet thinking that I was trying to read Greek because it made no sense to me at all. But for me, the way I am able to manage my finances is I use cash envelopes to be able to keep an eye on my money. And I'll talk a little bit more about my methods later. But the point is the way my brain works is not the way your brain works. So you need to find what works for you. But in this categorizing your spending step, here's some ideas that you can try out and to see what works for you. So up on the left-hand side of the screen, you'll see that picture that has the OKMM on it. That is our Oklahoma Money Matters free budget calculator. Uh, that is right on our website, oklahomamoneymatters.org. And it is, as I said, free to use. It allows you to put in your monthly income and then put all of your categories together, customize all of your categories, and then may zero out your budget. So give every cent in your budget a job. And then once you've done that, it actually lets you print it out. I have a former coworker who still to this day uses this for her budget. Uh, she has three sons and you know, children want things. And uh, for her, the easiest way for her to get her kids to understand that this is where our money is allocated because we're trying to purchase a house or we're trying to save up, put you through college, uh, was to print this out so her sons could see it. Well, you know, it is not that we can't afford to get you this video game. It's that we are putting this money towards getting a house that we can have as a family. So you have that to do. That especially works well if you're trying to budget as a couple because then you both can see what's going on. You can also just use Excel. If you're like my mom and you're really good with Excel and all of the formulas, you can make a really great budget. They have not only budget templates, but you can make your own and figure out what works for you there. You can also just use pen and paper. You don't have to get fancy with it. You can just grab a notebook. You know, before computers were really a thing, I know I just dated myself there. Uh, the way that my mom did our family budget was she actually had one of those marble notebooks that you grab from Walmart. Uh, and that was how she did our budget every month was she would have a new page and list everything out. Um, some other options. If you are really app savvy, I got three really good apps here. This first one on the left is 
uh, mint.com. And that one is really great um, and helps you categorize it, uh, hooks up to most of your banks. And that way you can actually go in and look at your transactions and then say, oh, well, this was going out to eat. This was gas. This was this. And it helps put them into categories for you and tally them up so you can see them. Uh, this one in the middle, that is Every Dollar by Dave Ramsey. If you have done any kind of research on your own, a personal finance, I know you've heard of Dave Ramsey. Um, and so this is his app. And it also allows you to do what they call a zero-based budget, which is take your paycheck and give everything a job and track your expenses. And then on the far right-hand side, uh, that is what's called You Need a Budget or YNAB. That app is not free, but as a student, you can get the first year free to try it out. So lots of good things. And there are so many other apps out there. So find what works for you. These are just three that I am very familiar with that work really well. And I think you should try out. All right. So the next thing we've gone and we have written out all our financial responsibilities. We've tracked all of our spending. So we see in categories where all of our money is going. So what now? Well, we need to make sure the money we have coming in matches what we have going out. Well, what if that doesn't match? What do you do? Okay, well, here's what you do. First, you need to sit and ask yourself a question. Do you have an I'm not bringing in enough money problem? Or is your problem that you're spending too much? And I'll let you in on a little secret. For most people, it's a combination of both. And that's not a bad thing. We're human. And, you know, our society, we tend to be consumers and spend money. And we want to be able to do that. And it costs money to do that. So it's okay. But we have to be able to prioritize our spending. And that's where your categories come in. So now that we've figured out what it is, right? Either you you are not bringing in enough income. So maybe we need to find another way to bring in income. And we'll talk about that here in a little bit about some ways you could do that. Uh, there's also um, maybe you are spending too much. So are there things you could cut down on? Maybe live in a cheaper place or maybe carpool so you're not spending as much gas. Then cut those things down so you can make them match. Okay. So how do you prioritize that? Well, you have to really sit and think what things are needs that I have to have, what things are wants, and what things are obligations. So let me kind of explain what those things mean. So a need is something you have to have, right? You have to have it to survive. And there's really two different types of needs. There is what we call uh, true needs, right? Things you need to survive, right? Stuff like shelter and food. You have to have some place to, to live. You have to have food in your belly to survive. Those are true needs. And then there's what I like to call circumstantial needs. And those are things that you may come across that you have to have, even though you don't, well, you won't necessarily die if you don't have them, but you have to have them in order to make money, in order to uh, you know, live your day to day. Things like maybe having a car. Depending on where you live, you may or may not need a car. So for those people who live somewhere where public transportation is really good, you maybe you live on campus and you work on campus, so you don't really need a car. You can walk around campus and then you know catch the bus if you have to go to the store. Uh, that may be a thing. But if you live far outside of the city, you live away from campus, you're a com commuter, you may need a car, right? Uh, you may need to be able to get to work every day and you work miles from campus where you can't walk or take public transportation. Um, it may also be things like internet. I know during COVID, many of us were working from home and you had to have internet in order to work from home in a lot of cases. So those are circumstantial needs. The next are wants. These are things that you want to have. They are nice to have. Sometimes uh, you'll hear some people say that they are a luxury to have. Not necessarily, but there are things that you don't necessarily need to have to survive. Those can be things like 
going out to eat or a Netflix subscription. They could also be things like, um, in some cases, internet. And I said that it was a circumstantial need, but if you live close to campus, you can go and you can use your campus Wi-Fi. Uh, you can go use the Wi-Fi at Starbucks if you really, really needed to, to be able to get your homework done. Um, so that is something that is can be a want. So if you are in a really dire situation, that may be something that you can cut out. Okay. And I definitely thought there was another slide there and there was, <laughs> so we're going to go back and, uh, and we're also then going to talk about obligations. So obligations are those things that you have signed a contract and that contract says that you have agreed to pay that. That's going to be things like a credit card payment or a student loan payment. Um, sometimes that could even be something like internet or your smartphone. If you finance that phone through the phone company or you have a contract with your internet provider that you're going to have internet for a certain number of months. So that being said, decide what those things are for you. And those things for you are not going to be the same as they are for someone else. You know, what you think of as a need is something maybe I think of as a need isn't something you think of as a need, right? You know, every, every I tell the story and people chuckle, but I have a coffee budget. In my budget, I have a line item for being able to go to coffee shops and get coffee. And everyone laughs. But really, like, I'm not functional without caffeine in the morning. And because I travel all over the state, there are many times that I am up really early in the morning and I'm kind of bleary eyed walking out the door trying to get to whatever campus I have to go to. So I build a line item in to be able to go by a coffee shop and grab a coffee in the morning because that makes my life easier. So for me, it's technically a want, right? Like if I lost my job tomorrow and had to make do, that would be one of the first things that I cut. But it is a want. It's something I want. So even though I'm on a debt payoff journey trying to you know, pay some things off, I might limit how much money I give myself to do it, but I'm not going to cut it out completely. Why? because it brings me joy and I have the money to do that, right? But if I didn't have the money to do that, I could sit down and go, all right, I can get rid of this. And that might be something different for you. It might be, you know, you have a family dinner once a, a month that you guys all get together and go out to a restaurant and that's important to you. So that might be something that you budget in. Maybe being able to go out with your friends a couple times a month is something that you want to budget in. Um, so those are important to make sure that you are looking at those and evaluating them because you can, uh, there's a blogger that I really love, um, called Paula Pant and she has a, a podcast that's called afford anything. And her tagline is you can afford anything, but you can't afford everything. And I love that saying, because it really illustrates the point I'm trying to make here is that you can customize your budget to fit your priorities. So making sure that your spending is going towards things that you are your priority at that moment, right? And as a college student, your priority is getting through school, right? Getting that degree, making sure that you, you get through. All right, the next thing, an emergency fund is a must, right? Do not forget to have an emergency fund because no matter how well, you budget, right? The fastest way to mess up your budget is to have an emergency. But the thing is, emergencies happen all the time, right? You get in a car wreck, you have a tire blowout, you have an animal that gets sick, you yourself get sick and have to go to the doctor. Those are all things that you need to have. So it's important to have that. And every cent that you have in an emergency fund is one cent less that you'll have to put on credit to afford whatever that emergency is. And that's important because you will end up promising your future money to someone else if you have to use debt. Whereas if you can take that money and you can put it in savings, you're borrowing from yourself. You're not borrowing from someone else because then as you're paying that money back, you're putting it back into a savings account that's paying you interest instead of you paying someone else with interest if you have to use debt right? And then 
that is the most important because the fastest way you're going to blow your budget up is if you don't have an emergency fund when something happens. So build that in, even if it's $5 a paycheck, right? I understand that sometimes it can be very hard, but make it like it's a bill, right? Pay yourself before you pay ever, anyone else, five, 10, $15 every paycheck. Whatever money you have set aside for an emergency is going to help you have to use less debt in order to finance an emergency when it happens, which is going to end up messing up your budget long term and make you have to wait longer for your goals. So as I kind of mentioned already when I was talking about my coffee budget, customizing is key, right? Depending on what your goal is, whether it is saving up a certain amount of money, whether it is putting back money to invest, whether it is paying for college in cash and not having to take out any student loans, whether it is, um, you know, being able to still have entertainment, go out uh, with your friends, whether it is paying off debt, you have to be able to still have a little fun, right? It, you have to be able to live with this budget. You know, a lot of financial gurus talk about that you, you know, if you're in debt, you should never be going out to eat. If you are, uh, you know, you should be just concentrating on paying off your debt. And that's great for some people, but also your mental health is important because if you're going to stay motivated long-term to do whatever that is, you need to make sure that you can still live your life. So that means you still need to be strict on yourself, right? You can't just go out and spend all this money going out with your friends. But if you set aside 20, 30, $40 a month in order to be able to go out to eat a couple of times or go catch a concert or do something like that, that's okay because that is sustainable. It makes sure that you are able to hit your goals long-term instead of going super extreme because you'll end up spending that money anyway. And then you'll end up beating yourself up later because you're not concentrating on the long-term because you're so frustrated when it comes up to this thing you want to do or this thing you have to do that you didn't budget for. So make sure that you build that in there. All right. We've already touched on a few of these, but let's talk about some things that can bust your budget, right? You can have the most beautiful budget, but if these expenses and things come up, you're not going to be successful. And everyone, I don't care who they are, unless they are infinitely wealthy, have a budget. I guarantee at least at one point, even your super wealthy folks that are first generation lived on a budget at one point, if not still right? It's just like running a business. Businesses have budgets. And so it's important to make sure that you are taking into account with these things to make sure that you have everything you need covered. So make sure you're not forgetting annual expenses, right? You have to register your car. You have to pay your insurance. Um, you know, maybe you have a gym membership and that gym has a month, has a yearly fee that they charge you once a year. You have to make sure that you can pay that. So it may be a lot easier, say that fee is $100 once a year, it's a lot easier to take out a little bit of money once a month and put it back in savings for that purpose than it is to try to find it all at once the month that it's due, especially when you're talking with something like insurance, which might be six, seven, eight, nine hundred dollars every six months. Um, you know, where are you going to come up with that? So plan a little bit of money every month out of your budget for those expenses. That way you can be successful long-term. Uh, you're also going to bust your budget if you don't have an emergency fund. Uh, you know, I've told students this story a lot, but back in 2019, uh, my partner and I, we went to go to New Orleans for his birthday and we were in Houston. We'd stopped to visit some friends overnight and we were getting back on the road to head towards New Orleans. And we ended up getting in a car accident and totaled my car. And our friends who we'd been staying with in Houston left that day to go on vacation themselves. So we didn't have anybody available that we could stay with. We ended up having to pay for a hotel we weren't planning on. We ended up having to pay for uh, flights back to Oklahoma that we weren't planning on, meals we hadn't, plan we hadn't planned for. And that happened. Well, at the time, I didn't have 
an emergency fund. And you know what happened? Not only did I end up having to take money out of the my monthly budget and, and for lack of a better phrase, rob Peter to pay Paul for the next several months, I also had to put some of it on a credit card. And I ended up having to pay that off over the course of a couple of years afterwards. So whereas if I had had money in, a, in an emergency fund, I could have paid that money and as much as that probably would not have been a fun experience anywhere around, I could have paid for it and then been done, right? And not had to uh, go on and uh, keep, you know, keep paying for it month after month with insurance. I could have gone and taken that and paid myself back for the money that I ended up having to use. But also make sure you have an entertainment budget. I mentioned this already, but y'all, you're going to want to go and do things. So build a little bit of money in to make sure that you can so it's sustainable. Because also, if we're talking about a college budget, yes, you're in college for your academics, but college should also be fun. So make sure that you're building a little bit of money in there so you can enjoy your experience while you're in school. Just make sure that you're being strict on yourself, right? Don't pull money out of one category to go to another. Make sure that if all you have for this week to go have fun with is $20, that you don't spend more than that. There are tons of free events that you can go look for that will give you ways to do that on the cheap. And we'll talk about that more here in just a minute. All right. Last but not least, make sure you're not giving up too easily because the thing is, y'all, it is it can be really frustrating sometimes, right? We all make mistakes. You know, I'm a professional that teaches people how to manage their money and I still have budget shortfalls. I still make mistakes. There's still bills that I forget and there's nothing wrong with it, but you need to make sure that you regroup and fix it the next month. All right, so let's talk about things that you can do to make your money stretch and ways that you can either save money um, or, you know, help yourself get through school. So here's a few things. First, apply for more scholarships. If you guys are in college, just because you're in college doesn't mean you stop applying for scholarships, right? Check out the scholarships that are available through your school. I've got some websites at the end of this that have other places that you can look for scholarships. Apply for them. Make sure that you are looking for the deadlines. The more you can apply for scholarships, the better, because sometimes the scholarships you get don't last you all four years of school. Make sure you're getting rid of unused memberships. If there's things that you are, you are not using, get rid of them, even if it's temporarily, so you can take that money and shift it towards something else. Pick up a side hustle, babysit, pet sit, uh, walk people's dogs. Uh, there's tons and tons of ways out there that you can pick up extra money here or there to help you while you're in school that allow you to still work around your class schedule. Pick up a part-time job or a work-study job if one of those are available on campus. A work-study job will pay you at least minimum wage depending on what school you are at. And it, you're usually on campus. It works around your school schedule because it's on campus. So it makes it really easy to earn some extra money. And depending on what campus you're at, sometimes that money goes to the bursar and helps pay off your balance. Sometimes it comes straight to you in a paycheck. When I was in college, I was a work study student and I used that paycheck that I got from my work study to buy my groceries and to pay, put gas in my car. And that meant that I didn't have to take out a student loan in order to pay for those expenses. I was able to pay for those in cash. Meal plan. You know, I say this and I, I feel like when it comes to finances, this kind of gets ground into people's heads and they don't really understand what it means. But shop sales, look for things that you can plan out your meals. When I started doing this, even as an adult, I saved hundreds of dollars every month just by saying, oh, well, look at this. There's chicken on sale. So I'm going to go buy this chicken and then I'm going to look up some recipes that have this in here. And I'm going to put these meals together. You know, when I was single and living on my own, one of that meant, meant 
meant, ugh, excuse me, might mean that I made a big crock pot of soup and I ate on that all week long, or I made something of that nature. Even back when I was in college and it was ramen noodles were my budget, you know, I would go buy some chicken on the cheap and then I would plan different things that I could make with that ramen. I could throw in veggies or I could throw in chicken or I could throw in, you know, ground beef if it was there and make it a little more interesting so you don't get bored. Uh, also, if you got stuff you're not using, get rid of it. Not just, you know, your um, subscriptions. If you've got, you know, things that you're not using, clothes you're not using, consignment stores, you can get some money back. There are all sorts of apps, and I'll talk about that here in a minute, of things that you can do. But also consider your college. Now, I'm not telling you if you are going to you know, a more expensive school to like drop out and go to a different school. But for our folks who are in high school and who work with high school students, it's okay to have the conversation that our big universities are stellar schools. And I am definitely not trying to tell you to not go to them, but your, your basics that you get your, you know, Englishes and your maths and your sciences and the things that we all have to take in order to get a degree in college they are the exact same, whether you get them at OU or you get them at OCCC, uh, you know, whether you get them at UCO or uh, University of Tulsa, or you get them at Tulsa Community College, they are the same classes and they might be cheaper at something like a community college for a couple of years. And that doesn't say that you can't go and transfer into one of those bigger schools. I did that myself. I started at Rose State College and then ended up going on to UCO and then OU. And I was able to do that and save myself a lot of money in the process. So not saying you can't shoot for the stars and that you shouldn't, but it's definitely an option, even if you just maybe take some classes over the summer to help make it a little bit cheaper to pay for your education. Also seek out community resources. I say this a lot and people are surprised that I actually recommend this, but here's the thing. Those community race resources, things like food pantries on campus or things like SNAP benefits are things that actually are there to help you uh, as a hand up. You know, in a previous job, I worked for our regional food bank here in Oklahoma, and most of the people that we dealt with weren't people who were destitute and living on the street. They were people who were working two and three jobs and were trying to make ends meet, and they just couldn't, and they just needed a little bit of help. So utilize those resources. Many of the campuses that we have have those resources for their students. Uh, so be sure to seek those things out because they can definitely help you by taking a little bit of the financial burden off of you to where you can take the money you do have and put it towards other things. So make sure that you are looking into that. Okay, so let's talk about some other things that you can do to keep your expenses down while you're in school, okay? Not a popular option, but consider living at home. If you live close enough, live at home for a little while because you don't have to pay for room and board. Stay with mom and dad as long as you can. And I understand that that is not possible in every circumstance. And if that's the case, okay, get a roommate or more than one. I know I had a few while I was in college. I actually have a cousin who uh, had multiple. She lived in a place with five other girls. Uh, at one point, you know, she rented a room and that was how she was able to pay her rent while she was out and about. Also consider location. Generally, the closer you are to campus, the more expensive your rent's going to be. So, uh, you know, for example, I just recently moved from Norman and I can tell you that the closer you live to campus, the more expensive your apartments generally are because they are your student living apartments, um, some of the newer apartments. And if you go a little bit further away from campus, sometimes those are a little bit cheaper. So definitely consider those where you're still close enough to campus, but maybe you could take advantage of the price difference. Okay, let's talk a little bit about transportation. Look at some things that you can do. Can you walk to campus? Do you live close enough that you could walk a few days a week? Do you have a bike? 
You know, I had a friend when I went to UCO that he lived real close to campus and he had roller skates and he would, he would roller skate to and from class every day. Um, and it got him where he needed to go. He got a workout and it saved him a tremendous amount of money than trying to drive to campus and pay for parking and, and do all of those things. Can you carpool? This a lot of people don't think about, but saves a tremendous amount of money. My senior year in college, my roommate and I had the same major and we purposely built our class schedules where they were very similar to each other. We were only maybe an hour, uh, you know, before my classes or, or we'd have a class that stayed a little bit later. So, and on the same days. So she and I could carpool to and from campus on those days and save some money because we weren't both trying to go to campus because we were both trying to get to campus anyway. Um, consider public transportation. If you live in a town where public transportation is a thing, try it. Also be strategic. Don't, you know, go to the store and then go home and then go to campus and then come back because then you're wasting your gas and you're putting more wear and tear on your car. So you're going to end up spending more money in the long term. Maybe set yourself out where you're going to campus and you know that you can swing by Walmart or Target or whatever afterwards and then go run some other errands and then go home. So you're actually saving yourself some money in that process. Um, and then consider if you can, looking at a cost-friendly vehicle, right? Looking at the mileage per, per gallon of your vehicle, uh, trying to find a vehicle that maybe doesn't have a car payment. Maybe you can get a car that isn't the flashiest, but it's something that is paid off that will allow you to get to and from campus right now without having to pay for a car. Next, textbooks and supplies. This is one of the things that when I was in college surprised me the most was how much sometimes textbooks can cost. So do your research. Even more than when I was in college 20 years ago, there is so much out here on the internet. that You can find your textbooks for cheap. Go to the bookstore, look around, see what books you, you want. Most teachers will give you your the identification numbers for the, the textbook that they want and you can go and put it in Amazon or Google and find it for a lot cheaper. Um, so do your research, see what you can find. Don't just go to the bookstore and pick out a book because that's the book they said you needed to have. See if you can find it online for cheaper. Um, borrow textbooks from friends. You know, I use the same example. My roommate and I were the same major. And so she and I sometimes would strategically take classes the other semester from each other so we could share textbooks and share the cost. And it made it a lot cheaper for us. Check out the library. I've had plenty of students that I have talked to who were able to check out a book from the library, or they were able to go to the library and use the textbook in the library to read the chapter they needed to without having to physically have the book. Check out ebooks if that's an option that it's a little bit cheaper and you can look at it from your laptop. So you're not having to have. Um, other things. If you've already got something like an iPad, some sort of tablet, see if they have an ebook option because a lot of times those are cheaper. Um, if you do have to have an actual textbook, see if you can buy used from a friend online. Um, the campus bookstore generally has used options. Um, and compare prices. You know, when I went to UCO, we not only had this school bookstore, we also had another bookstore that was like a discount bookstore. And then there was a third bookstore in, in Edmond that actually had options as well. So I would go check all of those before I would decide which one I was going to buy the book from. And sometimes I would find, you know, one textbook was cheaper here, but the others were in another store. And so I'd go to those different stores and get the textbooks at the cheapest price possible. So I'm spending less money. And then when possible, buy in bulk. Uh, you know, you're going to need things like scantrons or pencils or pens, um, maybe blue books for essays if they don't have a virtual option for you to use. And if that's the case, try to buy those in bulk because you can use those for multiple semesters. Or if you have roommates and you guys all need them, see if you can all go in on that and make it a little bit cheaper. All right, we already talked about meal planning when it comes to food, but also look for things like coupon apps, weekly sales at the grocery stores that are near you and discount retailers. 
There's a lot of them. Consider buying generic when you can. You know, I know some people will argue with it, but there are many, many generic brands that are literally packaged the same exact product, but they are put with a store brand. For example, something like a great value cheese might actually be packaged in the same facility as Sargento or one of the other name brands. And it's a little bit cheaper because it is great value. Same thing with the medications that you get there. Nine times out of 10, it's really the same product. It's just put in a different store branded package uh, that will save you a little bit of money. So consider where you can buying generic, right? Take advantage of special deals. This happens a lot, and especially for college students. Utilize that student ID. There are lots of places where you can go and get things for cheap. I was actually talking to a colleague about uh, this yesterday, how so many of our students, if you have your student ID with you, can actually take advantage of some pretty significant discounts. So look for those places that allow that. And if you do decide to go out to eat split entrees with friends, one of my favorite things that my roommate and I used to do in college when we just wanted to get out of the house and do something was the El Chico that was right down the street from our house used to, I believe it was on Wednesdays, do like a $6.99 enchilada dinner. And it was huge. The portions were gigantic. And she and I would go and order one with an extra plate. And she and I would each get, you know, whatever water, soda, whatever we were drinking. And then we would split that entree and we got to go out and get out of the house and eat food that we didn't cook and hang out and, you know, laugh a joke and, and, you know, get out of our, our work mode for a while, but it was very cheap and ended up coming out to about $4 per person before tip. Um, and it saved us a tremendous amount of money. So look for those deals um, and, and utilize those where you can to help uh, feed yourself. Okay. Internet, right? We've discussed that depending on where you are, you may need to have internet. So if you do, make sure you're doing your research. You know, we actually just switched providers here at my house because we found a provider that saved us about $30 a month, not $30 a month of money that we were able to take and put towards other things. Um, so make sure you're doing your research and you're looking at all of your available options and compare those prices. When you can, utilize the school Wi-Fi. If you live close enough to campus, go check out the school's Wi-Fi. You may not even have to have Wi-Fi at your house if you have the time to go and sit on campus to do your homework or whatever it is that you need to do. If you don't, check out the town you live in, right? Do you have a favorite coffee shop that offers free Wi-Fi that'll let you go there and do your homework? Um, do those things, but be careful if you're going to use a public Wi-Fi that is unsecured. Don't put anything private on there uh, because you could get your identity stolen that way if you are not careful, and then that's going to end up costing you more money than you are intending. All right, so let's talk about entertainment, right? We've already discussed entertainment is important to your mental health, especially when you are stressed, you've got all of these tests and all of these things going on. You need to make sure that you are able to um, take a break and give yourself some time, right? Don't leave it out completely, but budget for it, right? Make sure that you have the money set aside and you only utilize the money that you have set aside, right? So make sure that you're not breaking the bank. Especially in college towns, make sure you're looking for free and low cost activities, most college towns have these, most campuses have them, you know, free movie nights or festivals or um, different things that you can do. Look for those, you know, we live here in Oklahoma, there are some of the most beautiful state parks. Go pack a picnic and go hang out, get out in, in the sun and see what's going on, check out hiking trails and, and all of those things, right? Furniture, what are some things that you can do cheap? Check out garage sales, thrift stores. You know, we just moved and I just took probably four different trips to Goodwill and dropped off a lot of really good stuff that we have. And I know that I'm not the only person that does that regularly. 
I have found some amazing deals there before. I have furnished entire rooms in my house with things that I found secondhand for super cheap. We're talking, I found lamps for a dollar or two uh, that are the exact same lamps that I've seen at Target and Walmart for, you know, 20 or $30. Uh, check out classified ads. See what people are saying. Facebook marketplace, real uh, resale apps, things like OfferUp, uh, Macari have a lot of things like that that you can utilize. Right. And for those of us who enjoy looking uh, the part and maybe don't want to give up having style, there's a lot of really cheap ways that you can do this. Uh, be frugal, right? It doesn't mean that you have to not be fashionable. Consider consignment stores. Consider um, things like Macari or, or Poshmark, where you can get really good quality items used most of the time lightly used, um, sometimes with, with tags on them still. I've purchased things off of both of those sites that literally still had the original tag on them. Someone had bought them, put them in their closet, forgot they had them, and, and it was still there. Um, so look at those different things. Um, and remember that everything goes on sale eventually. I was so excited a few years ago. I had this pair of jeans I wanted so badly. And I'm not normally the person that just latches on to a pair, like a pair of pants or something that I see that's so cute. But I saw these jeans and I loved them. They were at Torrid, which if you've ever shopped at Torrid, you know that sometimes like their jeans are extremely expensive. You know, I've seen them anywhere from 50 to $100 for a pair. And I was like, I cannot justify spending $90 on a pair of jeans, no matter how much I like these jeans. Uh, so I kept an eye on them. I kept checking their sales, checking out their clearance. I was finally able on clearance to get that pair of jeans for about $25, about six months later. Uh, so I still was able to get the jeans. I just had to wait it out. Another good option that I've seen many people do and that I still do with my friends is hold a clothing swap, right? You know that your friends have really cute clothes that you can utilize. Have a clothing swap. Everybody bring food. You can hang out, make it a social thing. And you can look at each other's clothes that you don't want anymore and swap. I've gotten some of the cutest things that are in my closet from my other friends' closets and things that they either didn't fit into anymore or they didn't like anymore that were so adorable. Um, so go and look at those things. And those are all ways that you can still do what you need to do, but do it on the cheap. All right, before we wrap up, if you have any questions, put those in the chat now. I've got about two slides left before we are done. Uh, so here's some alternative methods. We've sort of talked about this, but some things that you can consider. Consider when you're talking about maintaining your budget, doing things like cash envelopes. For some folks, this is easier because you are actually handing over cash and you can look down and you can see how much money you have left in your envelope. And this helps a lot on staying strict because once you are done with the money in that envelope, that money is done for that category. You can also use multiple bank accounts. This is a method that I use too. When I get paid, I will take all of my bills and put them into my auto pay account. And that auto pay account um, has everything set to auto pay. I look it up, see how much it is, and it is out of sight, out of mind. I make sure that that is done. And what is left in my checking account is the money I have to spend. And then I pull that out in cash envelopes and divvy it up. And that is how I have been able to successfully budget. So consider both of those methods. If you get paid every two weeks, you can also consider uh, budgeting by paycheck, right? Going through just one paycheck and saying, what things do I need out of this paycheck and budgeting a little bit out of each check. Um, and you can also, for your larger things, consider doing half payment budgeting, where say you have $1,000 is your rent, you can take $500 out of one check, $500 out of the other check, and put that in savings. And that way, when rent comes due, you already have that money available, but it's taking a smaller bit out of each paycheck. So you have a little bit more money to work around, work around instead of trying to pull $1,000 out of one paycheck. So... And most importantly, remember 
through this entire process, as with trying to get through college, it's a marathon, not a sprint, right? Take it one day at a time, be easy on yourself. Uh, you will, you will get through this. Okay. Um, so take it one day at a time. Here are some resources that I think you guys will find useful. I will be sending out this recording as well as these slides uh, within about a week. So make sure to uh, keep an eye on your email for that. You're also welcome to go ahead and take a screenshot of this while I'm talking. Um, some resources, you've got oklahomamoneymatters.org, our website, um, the links for all of those apps that I talked about, uh, the Budget Nista and the Budget Mommer, who are two of my favorite financial bloggers, um, as well as Budget Bites is a really good site for finding really cheap meals to make um, and ideas. And it helps you literally break it down for how much per serving you are, uh, you are spending. OKDHSLive.org is the website you can go to in order to apply for things like SNAP benefits for uh, help. Many, many, many students, because they are on financial aid, can qualify for SNAP benefits. So if you're an independent student and you are using your financial aid, do consider doing something like that um, and looking into that because that is an option for you. Um, and then these last four are all scholarship websites as promised. So make sure to check out you can go to.org and okcollege.start.org, which are from my uh, sister initiatives here at the Oklahoma College Assistance Program and the Regents. Um, both have huge scholarship databases. Um, also check out OCCF.org, that is the Oklahoma Community Foundation, or oh, excuse me, Oklahoma City Community Foundation, um, as well as TulsaCF.org, which is the Tulsa Community Foundation. Uh, I know we have folks from all over the state here, so don't fret just because it says Oklahoma City and Tulsa does not mean those are the only people who can get those scholarships. There are plenty that you only have to either attend a certain school. Some of them are, if you are, um, you know, live in a certain part of the state, some of them are just for Oklahoma students uh, on those OCCF and Tulsa CF. So make sure to check those out. And I am going to check the chat for questions, but if I do not get to your question, please feel free to shoot me an email and I will be more than happy to help. All right, Alyssa, you said that there's an amazing resource on YouTube, Dollar Tree Dinners, that talks about food resources and meal planning on a budget, sometimes week by week, and also for special occasions on a really realistic budget. That is awesome. Thank you for sharing that. I'm actually going to check that out myself. All right, y'all, that is all we have for living on a college budget. I hope that you've got a lot of information out of that. If you have questions, please put them in the chat. But if you don't, you are welcome to go ahead and head out. I'm going to hang back for a couple minutes in case we have questions. But thank you all so much for being here with us today. Make sure to join us next month. I will be with my colleague, Letha, from our You Can Go To initiative. And she's going to be talking all about completing the FAFSA. And we're going to be talking a little bit about the FAFSA simplification. So if you want to know what's going on with the FAFSA uh, next month, make sure to join us. Have a great day, y'all. <laughs>